Hello, I'm lonely. I work from home, which means I don't always have time to go out and see my friends. My family are always teasing me, saying, Freddie, you don't have any friends. The reason you can't go out and see them is because they don't exist. But today I'm going to prove them wrong. Today, I'm going to forge an image of myself making a friend using Adobe Photoshop. And I'll show you how you can too. It's easy, I promise. Photoshop can help you tell stories you didn't think you'd be able to tell. For example, you've got this friend who looks like really similar to you and you're really good friends and your best friends and your family just haven't met them. My name is Freddie Guthrie aka Art by Freddie Kiss Kiss. I'm an art director and a graphic designer. I live in Glasgow in Scotland and my full address is for- First you'll need a photo of yourself. I took this one in a park but feel free to not go to a park. For the purpose of the narrative I took this on a tripod with a self timer so no further questions your honour. Next you'll need a picture of yourself on a fairly blank background, there's actually a poster behind me in this but you'll see in a second that that doesn't really matter. Take it into Photoshop and choose select subject. Now this is normally fantastic and here it gets me about 90% of the way there. You can see here that it's grabbed a little bit of the background so you can go in with the quick selection tool, hold down alt or option and just clean that up. For a little more realism I'd recommend going to the select and mask panel at the top and tweaking a few settings. I like to up the radius slider and tick smart radius which just helps make the edge detection a bit more accurate. You can also choose to smooth the selection, you can see on my shoulder it becomes a lot less jagged. I use this red background to preview the selection but there are a few different settings on how it displays but the red is helpful because it makes it really clear what's selected and what's not. Feathering fades the edge of the selection, which can make it more realistic when you paste it into the other image. Nothing's ever that crisp in real life. Upping the contrast and shifting the edge inward slightly can stop the feathering from catching any of the background. I like to zoom in and check everything's looking okay before pressing enter and then copying and pasting this into the next image. It's worth taking some time to adjust the scaling to make sure it sits naturally in the image. But once you're happy, press enter and commit the transform. You might want to change the lighting, so go to image, adjustments, then brightness and contrast and tweak it until it looks right. To match the shoulder highlights on the original image, I selected the new image by command clicking the layer thumbnail, adding a new layer and then using a white soft brush to draw in some highlights. Then I set the blend mode to soft light which made it slightly subtler but much more realistic. There's no formula for things like this and I don't think many tutorials emphasise that enough. So if you think this looks weird, don't do it, do what looks right for your image. Then I selected both layers and converted them to a smart object which keeps them editable if I ever want to change this. I actually normally have this mapped to a keyboard shortcut because I love smart objects so much. I want to marry smart objects. I had another play with the image, then hit the top layer and press select subject for the background. I want to make it seem like my friend's standing behind me. This is the same process as last time, so going in cleaning up the edge with the quick selection tool, then refining everything with select and mask. Once that's done, press enter, then command shift i to invert the selection, then you can show the top layer, and hit the mask button to hide the unwanted parts of the image. I want my friend to feel even more real, so I'm going to add a disposable camera effect. I learned this from Andre Azizov on TikTok, and he's great and you should follow him. Start by adding a colour fill adjustment layer and setting it to this murky green. Then set the blend mode to exclusion. It's going to look really weird at first, not what you want, but if you reduce the opacity then the effect will start to show through. For my image I took it down to about 48%. To make it look more like a film photo you can add a levels adjustment layer underneath the green. Bring the shadow slider upwards slightly and the mid slider down. I also moved the highlights down a little bit as well. Then you can add some noise to it by making a new layer, filling it with a 50% grey using Shift F5 or Function Shift F5 if you're on a Mac like me. Then go to Filter and add some noise to it. Set the blend mode to Soft Light and this will get rid of the grey and just keep the noise. And there we have the finished product. Isn't it perfect? Doesn't it look so real? Doesn't he look like a living, breathing person? Well, I've designed a birth certificate to make him more real, and I'm going to show you how to make it look like it's been photocopied, like a proper document. Start by double-clicking your design's layer to get to the layer styles panel. Activate outer glow, change the blend mode to normal, the opacity to 50% and the colour to black. These next few settings are a bit more up for grabs, so I can show you what they do and you can decide how you want to use them. Spread decides how much of your glow is taken up by your colour, so if it's 100% it will be a solid block, if it's zero it will be very subtle. I like to keep it at about 10% for this. Size is very self-explanatory, the bigger it is, the bigger the glow is. Again I like to keep this fairly low, somewhere between 5 and 10 works nicely for this size of image, but this will depend on how big your canvas is. The range slider sort of affects the contrast of your glow, so I recommend keeping it at about 50%, I think it looks the most natural for this effect. Those are all the settings I like to change, so once you've got an image you're happy with, press enter and we can move on to the next step. 
Add in a paper texture and make sure it's covering the whole design, then set the blend mode to multiply. You can also add a scan texture set to screen, but this is not essential. I've zoomed in so you can see how it's looking. It's a really nice ink bleed effect and it takes basically no time. If you've got access to an inkjet printer, it can be nice to print it out and then scan it back in, but ink is really expensive, so this is quite a nice alternative. Hello, my name's Freddie Too. I'm a graphic designer and art director, currently based in Freddie One's bathroom. I'm hiding here because he doesn't know I exist yet. I came to life when he made my birth certificate and I've been watching him for a few days and I've got to say, he's awful. There's a reason he's got no friends. It's because he stinks. He has to go. So I'm going to show you how to remove someone from a photo using Adobe Photoshop's generative fill. And once that's done, he'll be gone and I'll be left to take over. Start by selecting the outline of what you want to remove. In this case, it's Freddy. I'm using the lasso select tool, but you can use whatever you like. Then go to edit and select generative fill. You'll be asked for a prompt and I wrote remove person. Wait for it to load and you'll be presented with three options. I didn't even need to look at the other two. The first one was perfect. And that's how easy it is. He's gone and I've replaced him. And nobody in his life is any the wiser. Well, thank you for watching. As always, I've been your host, Freddy aka Art by Freddy Kiss Kiss on TikTok and Instagram and you should follow me. I hope you found this video riveting and useful. The good thing about Photoshop is you don't have to stick to this tutorial exactly, you can just kind of use it as a jumping off point, do something that you think looks fun and just enjoy yourself and that's what I always do. And if you did make anything good, uh, share it using the hashtag Photoshop era. I love to see everything that you all create and my huge fan base means so much to me. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like or I'll come to your house and give you a knuckle sandwich. Have a good rest of your day or week and goodbye.